Now, this one here, older individuals with arteriosclerosis. If you get older, like 80 or 90, they used to say normal blood pressure was 100 plus your age. Now, does that mean everybody should have the same blood? No, that's, that's, again, that's foolish. That's why senior citizens, if they lower your blood pressure to 120 over 80, which is just some number they pulled out of a hat that some teenagers are supposed to have, and they're not treating you as individuals, they're treating you with a dogmatic approach, they get dizzy, fall down, break hips. Huh. Now, this is interesting. Okay, so now, I just came up with an idea that higher blood pressure might be better, right? Does that make sense? Any medical science to back that up? Because remember, you already passed the, the boards. You already knew that hypertension, prehypertension, secondary, okay, so, so you're already done. Now you're in the field. Let's look at actual science that's being done. Journal of the American Medical Association. It says mortality rates were four times higher for those who had systolic pressure of less than 120 in comparison to those who had pressure over 161. Uh, let me read this in English. If you had blood pressure higher, the systolic over 161, that's pretty high, you had less death rates. So come on, say it with me. Wow! <laughs> so the body's self-regulating and self... Well, I mean, how many people could be involved in this study? 48,000 people. Okay, and they found out if you had higher blood pressure, you had less death rates. Does this mean that if you have a problem that your body is self-regulating, you force it down lower, you compromise oxygen of the tissue, and you die early? Okay? So when somebody says, oh, doc, I've been taking four blood pressure medications and my, my, my blood pressure is still high, what do I do about it? And I say, stop the medications, fire the doctor, let's get in here and get your body healthy. <coughs> or if they say, my blood pressure reading is high, and I say, good, your body's self-regulating that's supposed to, does this make sense? Yeah, because yeah, I'm aware of the science. Now, they will say blood pressure is the silent killer. It will cause strokes, heart disease, and kidney disease. Have you heard that before? Yes, yes of course, of course. Here's the problem. High blood pressure is not a disease, it's a risk factor. In order to get a stroke, you have to have weakened blood vessels, a poor lifestyle, or some other problem. There's two types of stroke. One type of stroke is a blood vessel that clots. The clot goes in there and clogs the smaller blood vessels, and areas of the brain die. The other type of stroke is where a blood vessel is weak, it breaks that, and you stroke out. Now, what's interesting is one of the leading causes of stroke is blood thinners. What do they typically give people who have high blood pressure? Blood 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 thinner. A blood thinner. Okay. So one of the so now high blood pressure, heart disease. If you have heart disease, that means not enough oxygen is getting to the heart. So do you think your body's going to have to elevate blood pressure in order to get oxygen to the heart? Yeah. So wait a second. So high blood pressure could be preventing strokes. High blood pressure could be preventing heart disease, kidney disease. Your kidneys filter six quarts of blood every 20 minutes. They're super rich in blood. If you have a blockage in the kidney in order to get that, that fluid through it, does that mean you've got to increase pressure to it? Yes or yes? yes? So if blood pressure is not causing these disease, it's a concomitant factor. What really causes it, stroke, weakened blood vessels, blood clots, and those are from deficiency or toxicity, not from high blood pressure, okay? Of course, if you answer this on the board, you will fail. So I had to answer this incorrectly as well. So don't feel bad, young doctors. Heart disease comes from lack of oxygen. And again, deficiency or toxicity. Not deficiency of medications, but deficiency of nutrients. Kidney disease. Aspirin a day for a healthy heart. Gee, doc, I'm only taking a baby aspirin. Well, did you know that baby aspirin is the leading cause of kidney disease? It's been shown to have absolutely no benefit effect. And I put the journal article here, daily aspirin, ineffective and dangerous. So if you're taking it, slowly wean yourself off. Were you aware of this? No. I know. Interesting, isn't it? Glad you made it tonight. That's what I was told. I know. I'm, that's, you were told by the dogmatic approach of a guy that passed the boards who's very smart. He's just ignorant and what's the other one? Arrogant. 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 Okay, good. <coughs> High blood pressure is a clue to your body adapting to a problem. Right here, 
These are problems that your body is adapting to. Now here, do me a favor, sit up straight in your chair. Now all you gotta do is put your head forward and take a deep breath. Okay, now reposition just ahead and take a deep breath. Whoa, wait a second, did you feel that? I felt it too, it's kind of weird. Look at this. So here we were able to breathe easy. Here we weren't being able to breathe easy. How many, how many experienced that? Okay, so now your brain burns 25% of the total body oxygen. So does that mean that if you have posture like these three gals here, your heart or your self-regulating, self-healing body will have to increase oxygen or increase pressure to get oxygen to the brain to keep your body alive. Does that make sense? Yes or yes? yes. Okay, so what I tell my crew is we can identify high blood pressure victims because it's not a, it's not a, it's not a disease, it's your body adapting to it that these people are probably taking blood pressure medications here. Does that make sense? Okay, now, what happens if these people are taking the blood pressure medications? Are they in line for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, early kidney disease, heart disease from the drugs? Absolutely, you take the drugs away, they're gonna increase their pressure and they're gonna get oxygen to the brain and they're gonna live longer. I think it's, it might even be a better idea, get this, I know this is really crazy, but what if we change their structure, change their posture, reposition the head, and then the blood pressure lowers naturally because we're taking away the reason that's high in the first place. Yeah. Oh boy, that's really critical thinking. The body is self-regulating, it is self-healing. If you chemically lower oxygen, okay, or chemically lower blood pressure, you decrease oxygen. And remember, the body is self-regulating. I'm going to describe how it's self-regulating. In any one of these patients here, if you require higher blood pressure and you chemically lower it, is your body going to try and get it back up? Yes. Okay, yeah, so what it's going to do, it's going to secrete cortisol. Primary role of cortisol is to downregulate insulin receptors. In English, that means blood sugar goes up. So that means the blood pressure is going to slowly climb up. Oh, you know, we're not going to take you off of this drug, we're going to get you on in a second drug. Okay, that's going to work. Oh, no, we're going to get you on a third drug. Okay, oh, we're going to get you on a fourth drug. I think the record is, what have we, 22 prescriptions, 25, mm -hmm. around there? Okay, so, so we just keep drugging the person. Okay, but now, now if, if you keep drugging the person, does blood sugar go up? It has to, because that's a natural body response. So here, the body's self-regulating. It's self-healing. If you force it down lower, cortisol gets excreted. If cortisol gets excreted, this person is going to be misdiagnosed with, with type 2 diabetes. Can you see how the blood pressure medications lead to that? Is it 100% of the time or 100% of the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, that's just foolish. Um, let's take Diovan. Now, now we've got um, one, one of our patients, this medical doctor, and he was asking how to get off his blood pressure drugs. And so I took one of his drugs that he's taken and I did a study for him. Now, now this is a neat study. This is actually off of the person that manufactures it. Adverse reaction rates observed in clinical studies of a drug cannot be directly compared to the rates in clinical studies of another drug. It may not reflect the rates observed in practice. What this means is this drug has only been tested for a very short time in a very small population. When you start giving it to tens of thousands of people, we may notice certain side effects. Like Biox killing 60,000 people. Uh, what is it? The, the Avendi one? The, that's killed 48,000 people. You know, uh, have you heard of drug problems? Okay, yeah. Okay. So anyway, they're, they're hedging their bets here and they're saying, good God, we've only tried it on a few people. It gets in the real world. Okay. And then you look at this as a doctor, you might be wanting to prescribe it. You know, you don't know. You just went through trade school. It just came out. The drug rep was hot and she gave you some free samples. So, you know, you're going to look at this and you're going to say, hey, it was tested on 4,000 patients. Wait a second. Let's read further. Oh, 400 for over six months. Wait a second, I thought it was tested on 4,000 patients. Does that mean it was tested on 3,000, um, 3,600 patients for um, six weeks? Yes. Yeah. Drugs are tested no more, generally for about six to eight weeks. Then it was tested on um, uh, 160 for over a year. Wow, <laughs> that was really thorough. Okay, <laughs> so, so does this mean we're gonna put thousands of people on this stuff, month in, year in, year out, completely unscientific, that's ridiculous. Now the side effects, 